Black Americans in New York are in a very interesting situation from the outside looking in. This is a democratic city from top to bottom ran by people of color, minority and marginalized groups. And with that, you would think that black Americans in New York would have no problem receiving legislation as well as access to finances and resources to help elevate their community. But what we're actually witnessing is the opposite happening. This democratic city ran by people of color, minorities and marginalized groups are passing legislation and distributing funds and resources specifically and exclusively to benefit every other group but black Americans. Over the last six to seven months, New York has been throwing around tens of millions of dollars to pretty much every group in the city, with the exception being the black community. While everybody else is receiving exclusive funding, black Americans in New York City get people of color, rising tides, lift all ships funding that gets dispersed to everybody, which typically ends up going the way of this photo that you see in front of your screen right now. While other groups get to double dip, sticking their hands in the minority cookie jar while also collecting direct funding on the side exclusively for their group. As I discussed in my live stream last month titled NYC Mayor Eric Adams and Governor deliver $40 million to AAPI, but $0 in a hip hop lecture to the black community over the last seven months, New York has already delivered 40 to $50 million to the AAPI community and now are delivering $6.7 million to the LGBTQ community, which brings the city's total spending on the LGBTQ to roughly $25 million. Now, let me play a quick video for you first concerning the $6.7 million going to the LGBTQ community, and then we'll get into this article. When you sat down as a community and spoke with us, we heard, we listened, we implemented and took action. Today I'm proud to announce nearly $6.7 million for new and expanded programs supporting the LGBTQ plus community. The initiatives are the results of the roundtables, the conversations, and my long history of hearing about the discriminatory practices within the movement that was just discussed. Mayor Eric Adams announced Friday that his record $101 billion budget includes a new investment of nearly $6.7 million to provide services for the LGBTQ community, including money for nonprofits, legal services, and support for homeless youth. It's time for us to come together to combat hatred, to change minds and foster acceptance to provide concrete, meaningful services to those who need the assistance that we are calling for. New York is the city of Stonewall, said Adams Friday at Destination Tomorrow, the Bronx LGBTQ Center. The new funding includes $3 million for a peer navigator program funding 16 young adults to work at eight runaway homeless youth drop-off shelters and a financial literacy program, $1 million for legal services tied to housing, employment, and assistance with government benefits, as well as $1.5 million in additional workshops and parent support groups aimed at family acceptance. Right now, total city spending on LGBTQ services tallies up to $25 million. Now, I want to go back to the opening statement of this article where it reads, Mayor Eric Adams announced Friday that his record $101 billion budget includes a new investment of nearly $6.7 million to provide services for the LGBTQ plus community. Now, the reason I want to come back to that is because what this highlights is what I've been talking about for over the last year concerning the importance of local politics. In a late night vote, the New York City Council passed a record $101 billion budget after reaching an agreement with Mayor Adams last week. CBS News John Diaz has a look at what's inside the city's new spending plan. Following an hours long debate just before midnight Monday, the council passing this city's spending plan for 2023 by a vote of 44 to 6. Health Committee Chair Lynn Shulman admitting, while not perfect, the budget will help communities thrive as they recover from COVID. This budget creates a robust pathway to address the way we approach health care, housing, public safety. In a statement, the mayor proclaimed in part, this is a get stuff done budget that delivers on key shared priorities. 
A contentious part of the budget giving $90 million more to the NYPD. Although we don't see dramatic decreases, one of the biggest things that we did was ensure that we didn't see excessive growth. City Councilwoman Natasha Williams says it was one of the most transparent budget processes the city has ever had. But backlash began even before it was passed, with people protesting over cuts to the Department of Education, which is losing $600 million. The mayor says it's because of a slowdown of federal pandemic-related aid and loss of student enrollment. That record budget of $101 billion was approved by New York City Council local politics. Also, it was local politics that decided that they would carve out $20 million from the New York state budget for the AAPI community. And it is also local politics that made it a point to carve out $6.7 million exclusively for the LGBTQ community out of New York City record-breaking budget. For as much as we love to talk about Joe Biden, Kamala Harris, and the Democratic Party at large on a national level, none of what's happening in New York has anything to do with them. It is all local politics in New York that's doing all of this. And with that, what I want us to understand, in my opinion, is that the fact the fastest rate of change is going to come through local politics. The quickest way of getting the funding that your community needs is also going to come through local politics. It is far easier to organize and take over multiple city council seats than it is to take over multiple congressional seats. Now that's not to say that you shouldn't run for Congress. I believe that you should if you feel led to, and I'll be right there to support you if your campaign is on code. But I also strongly believe that we should have a very specific and intentional focus on local politics. And most importantly, building up local candidates who will go to bat for us. Cause if not, we can expect to get what we've been getting now, which is nothing. And that nothing is putting black America in a very vulnerable place. About four to five days ago, our good brother Rob from Blacklight Revelations 2 did a live stream titled Gun Ownership. Is it a hate crime deterrent? And in that live stream, he brought up a very good point on how black America is deliberately being left unprotected. He was discussing how everybody is getting either a hate crime bill or some sort of executive order offering their group protection except for black Americans. And this is something that you don't hear about in the mainstream media. This particular paragraph right here. Troubling rise of violence against African-Americans built upon historic racial fault lines and a polarized social climate. So let's just take this into consideration. Not only are we not getting any hate crime protection, but we're not we're also not getting any publicity for this. And the way that they're spinning these stories is that they're making it as if we are the face of all of the hate crimes that go on in the United States. So there's a media blackout as well as a concurrent propaganda machine going to not only not show how we're being attacked, but also to show us as the attackers of others. So again, that brings us to the same situation that we always face when it comes to dealing with the United States government. The United States government has made it clear when you provide hate crime protections for everybody else and the people who are getting hate crimes committed against them the most have no protection, what you're doing is facilitating open season on the group of people that's getting the most hate crimes. You're saying that there's consequences for harming Asians. There's consequences for harming LGBTQ. Your only option is if you want to harm somebody, the least likelihood of you facing a heavy consequence is if you harm black people. We're not going to give any media coverage about it. And we're not going to give them any special protection. So as usual, the government is treating things the way that the government is treating things. Now, what I'd like to add to that is that if everybody is getting some sort of legislative protection alongside exclusive funding for their group, then what does that mean for black Americans who are repeatedly being left out in the cold with nothing? No hate crime bills and no exclusive funding. Instead, at best, you get to stick your hand in the people of color, minority, marginalized groups, rising tides, lift all ships, community pot. And whatever you get out of that is what you get. And good luck. As I've stated numerous times, 
by 2053, the median wealth of black Americans will be zero. And by 2065, you will be fourth on the population list. In three to four short decades, there will not be any more black community. It'll exist in theory as something you can say, and people will know what you're talking about, but it won't exist in reality. By then, you'll be hard pressed to find a black neighborhood, good or bad. Cities across America will begin to look more and more like Los Angeles. Now, for those of you who don't know, I live in South Central LA, and I'm here to tell you that there is no black community here. Places like South Central and Inglewood are being gentrified right now as we speak. And when the black population gets priced out, they just disperse in all different directions. And the once more fluent black areas of Los Angeles like Baldwin Hills, View Park, and Windsor Hills, when those homes go up for sale, it's not us moving back into them. So hear me when I tell you that the time is short and you better get out of government what you can before it's too late. And with all that being said, that does it for today's video. So please make sure you hit that subscribe button as well as the bell notification next to the subscribe button so you can be notified whenever I release a new video. All social media links will be pinned in the comment section below. Please make sure you text TD Hip Hop to number 33222. That's TD Hip Hop to number 33222. That way you'll get a direct text notification whenever I release a new video, but it also serves as a protection plan for myself in case YouTube ever gives this channel the ax, I'll be able to send you a direct link to where you can find me next. And last but not least, for those of you who have a love and appreciation for the work that I put in on this channel, the number one way you can show your support is through Patreon. For only $3 a month, that will help put me in position to take TD Hip Hop Media off of YouTube. Remember, the goal is not to grow big on YouTube, but to grow independent of YouTube. And for those who have issues with joining Patreon, you could also hit the join button that's next to the subscribe button and that way you can become an official channel member for as little as three dollars a month as well and lastly if you have not already please make sure you join the emailing list there is no way that i can go independent of youtube if i cannot take the audience with me and the link to that will be pinned in the comment section as well thank you for your time and until the next video peace